Once upon a time, Matrix, in the village, many, many years ago, there lived a powerful dark vampire wizard. He had the ability to look into a pool of water and see futures, far, far futures, yet to manifest. In order to keep these psychic abilities that he had, he needed to drink the blood of the very purest fae. He was a vampire after all. The very purest fae were known as the cherub fairies. In the village, it was the greatest sin to harm the cherub fairies, for they were very pure. They were said to be related to the extremely rare, hardly ever seen, blue unicorn. The vampire wizard managed to drink the cherub fairy's blood in secret for many, many years, and no one knew how he got his powers. Whenever a cherub fairy went missing, the entire village would mourn the loss. And the vampire wizard blamed the disappearance on the hybrid wolf monster who lived in the hills yonder. Yet in truth, there was no hybrid wolf monster. The vampire wizard remained strong, youthful and highly psychic as long as he had a steady supply of cherub fairy blood. And over the years, the villagers grew angrier and angrier at the fictional hybrid wolf monster. The vampire wizard would laugh in private at how easy the villagers were to fool. Then one day, to the vampire wizard's utter horror, he saw a future in the pool of water that filled him with dread. All the villagers knew about him in this future. They knew it was him who had taken the cherub fairies and drank their blood for all these years. The villagers were furious and they were on their way to enact revenge against the vampire wizard. After seeing this future vision, the vampire wizard sat down and thought. He went into deep, dark meditation and he thought and he thought and he thought. How could he come up with a scenario that would match organic reality but shift the direction of that cumulative anger towards someone else other than him? He knew he could not change the future when it was etched in Destiny's time clock, but he could certainly superimpose a match upon it. For he was a very dark, very evil, but very clever wizard. Time went by, and the vampire wizard did not know what to do. Then one night, he had a dream. He dreamt the entire solution to his problem and he knew what he had to do. He would need many years to complete his masterpiece of reality and time bending, but he knew he could do it. He came up with a plan whereby the villagers would have to eat some fruit, juicy red plums, in order to ward off a deadly infection that would sweep the village. He would of course have to create the germ in the first place, and then he would need to poison the plums so that a few villagers did not survive, and especially that several cherub fairies would not survive. He could turn the poisoned plums into delicious-looking plum lollipops to give to the cherub fairies. Now the vampire wizard, he knew that there would be a certain group of villagers who refused to eat the plums for not all the villagers were so gullible, unfortunately. Some of them were pretty smart, and he knew they would eventually figure out his plan. So he had to make it foolproof so that the average villager believed him. Then the next step in the plan 
would be to say that those that didn't eat the plums were causing a terrible, deadly mutation of the germ, and it was their fault that the cherub fairies were being struck down by the infection. The villagers loved the cherub fairies so much, and, as I explained earlier in this story, it was the greatest sin to harm a single hair on the head of the pure cherub fairies, for they and they alone held the keys for the future survival of the fae. The villagers would thus turn their anger towards the plum-free fae and away from him, the vampire wizard. It was a foolproof plan and he had years to enact it. Yes, yes, it was foolproof. Or was it? I mean, what if there were more smart villagers than he originally thought? What if, eventually, all the villagers believed the smart ones and not him? That didn't bear thinking about for the vampire wizard. No, he would not conceive of not succeeding with this dastardly plot. So what do you think happened all the years later when the vampire wizard began to enact his plan with the poisoned plums and the cherub fairies. For the vampire wizard was almost immortal, and he lived through many generations of fey villagers before he finally put his long-conceived plan into action. Over the years, he managed to gather together other vampires and dark overlords who were on board with his plan. Yet even with help and assistance, his group could never, ever outnumber the Fey villagers. The only real chance he had at succeeding was hoping that the ignorance and the gullibility of the villagers remained, and he needed to keep them in that gullible state. For if they didn't, they would all wake up to the truth. For evolution cannot be stopped only halted, and halt it he did, with continuous distraction of every imaginable kind you could think of. Yet as I said, still some were smart, and they knew the truth. So what happened all the years later when the plan was put into action? Well, that chapter hasn't been written yet. But it all depends on the diligence, integrity, awareness, sovereignty and unity of the smart, awake and aware Fae. If they can stand in organic pattern within themselves, in alignment with true organic reality, then it will be the true organic reality that manifests. Why is this? It is because nature, the original template, God source frequency cannot be hidden away behind a false screen. It may work for a while, but only for a while. Eventually, the truth always shines through. Eventually, God wins. So I tell you, it has not been easy for me, your storyteller, to read aloud to you this most dastardly of tales today. Yet, of course, this is only fiction. We will be back with the next chapter once that story has been written. In the meantime, as you write your own story collectively, we thank you for listening. We are Magenta Pixie and the White-Winged Collective Consciousness of Nine. What is karma? Are there ways we can balance this and become karma free? Is there a particular nutritional plan we should follow for ascension? Do we increase our karmic balance by eating certain foods? How can we utilize sex magic to work with karma and move through ascension? There are many lessons we can learn from the peoples of ancient Lemuria 
a civilization that existed before our known history on planet Earth. As we move through an ascension process collectively, we move back into a new Lemuria, and we take with us all the knowledge we have accumulated since those times. In this transmission from the white-winged collective consciousness of nine, key codes are presented for cellular memory recall, linking the reader beyond Atlantis and into the harmonious frequencies of the first physical civilization on the Earth, Lemuria. The Nine respond to questions using the Lemurian way as a template. Key coded responses trigger activations within the reader as they receive the wisdom codes, standing as rainbow warriors of Gaia, moving into abundance, alchemy, and Stargate Ascension. This transmission is dear to my heart, and I'm so very pleased to announce my new book, Lessons from a Living Lemuria.